Hey, if you're wanting to get more control and power in your forehand, then there's a simple drill you can start doing that's gonna maximize that because it really comes down to a couple elements that when you put in place, really make it so much easier to have more control and power over your forehand. So let's talk about it a second and then we're gonna go do some drills. The first things I want you to think about when you're thinking about hitting a forehand is how we can basically have really good contact. And contact is everything. How many times have you hit a forehand and you feel like, man, my contact, if I could just consistently hit great shots, great contact, that I'd probably hit a better ball. And guess what, you're right. If you could consistently hit better contacts when hitting a forehand, you'll have more control and more power. Because you know, when you have had that great contact, exactly how good it feels. So let's talk about what makes good contact. Really, what makes good contact is making sure that your body is behind the racket when you're making contact. And so it looks pretty much like this. And you'll see different variations of it, whether the arm be straight and my shoulder's still behind my body, whether it be bent, but somewhere around here. Where you start seeing contact breakdown is where you see players trying to like force it and bring their arm around. You can see how my chest here is not behind my body. I'm kind of slinging my racket around. Or the opposite is where you don't rotate and it's just the arm making contact with the ball. And both of those aren't what you want. Pretty much the first one where you see people, they're trying so hard to generate power, but it's just not there. Where you see the pros and they're sitting there just easily swinging, making solid contact. So what is it? How do we get that great contact? Well, it really comes down from your preparation and how you gotta make sure that if you prepare the right way, the contact pretty much is guaranteed. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. So let's start from the end and work our way back. So let's talk about good contact. This looks like good contact, right? Meaning my racket's in front, even if my arm's bent, or straight, it doesn't really matter. Either way, I have really good contact right here. So let's kind of reverse this and see what happens. All I need to do from here is take the racket back. So if you could press kind of like rewind on a forehand, you'd see something like zzz, like this. But yeah, that's exactly what we want to do. So the very first part is if we're making contact here, the racket's gonna drop and go back. So what that would look like is this, okay? Okay, now here's the key of showing you how I went from here to here where most players are making mistakes. Because if you can understand this, you'll understand how to get it from here to here and do it the right way. So what I did to get it to go from here and back is simply do one thing. I took my hips and I pushed it back, okay? So by turning my hips back, it actually took the racket back. And my arm or my hand came down a little bit. It didn't go back, it just came down. So when I mean down, just that way. So if I just take the racket down and turn my hips, boom. And how you know it's still in the same spot is this. Here's my hand and here's my belly button and I'm gonna take it back again, boom. Here's my belly button and here's my hand. They're pretty much in the same spot. So what does this tell us? It tells us that by turning your hips, it takes your racket back. But here's the thing, how do I get the racket to go from here to here? I simply turn my hip again and bingo, I have just constructed perfect contact. So what screws everything up from having perfect contact? Well, basically, it, we take the racket back too far a lot of times. And so when we start turning our hips, look what happens. It's not there yet. So we have to continue to turn our hips. Or the other kind of hack around this is taking the racket back if you want to take it back that far. But then you have to speed the racket up much quicker to make sure it catches up to get into the slot position. And so ideally, if you want to have a simple, compact, consistent swing, you don't want to have to deal with taking your racket back too far. So the next drill I'm going to show you is how to make sure you can maximize your swing by having a great take back that'll make sure that when you get ready to swing, you're going to be right there every time. So now here's the drill I want you to do. And you can use a basket, you can use a wall, you can go uh, do this up against the net. But we're going to go assume that same position that we had before, which is having the basket as good contact. If the basket's good contact, all we want to do is turn our hips and then turn the racket or pull the racket slightly down. And so what I want you to do is simply from here, pull the racket forward a couple times, okay? Noticing that I'm pulling the racket forward using my hips. So if you've never heard me talk about this before, just taking, if I'm t uh, standing sideways, kind of the, the riddle is how do I get my racket, if this was the uh, contact, to make contact without moving my arms or my shoulders? And boom, this is how you do it. I'm basically turning my knee in and it's gonna bring the racket forward, okay? So I'm just gonna do this a couple times. Get used to doing this, okay? One more time, good. So now the question is, how do I get the racket back? So simply, all I'm gonna do is take my wrist and turn the racket up, okay? So, and if we reverse engineer this one more set, we're gonna come back to this position. 
Hmm, looks like a ready position. Okay, so if I go from here to a ready position and turn my shoulders, I'll take my racket back just a tiny bit, nothing crazy. This is where we get off hinge, we kind of take it back too far. If I take it back just a tiny bit, I'm still in this good position, drop it, and then bingo. So you now see that if you have great preparation and you're not overdoing it, okay, then you can have great contact. And it's a nice compact, nice swing because power is going to come from the ground, my rotation, and me driving all that energy through the ball, not from taking a huge swing. Yes, can you get some momentum or inertia from your swing? And that's totally right. And that comes from dropping the racket because when the racket drops, what I can do is start taking this momentum of the racket going down and falling in this energy and kind of catch that energy and use that energy to get the racket going because my hips are driving forward. So you can really see how here I'm just pushing the racket. Now, the second part of this drill, after you do this, is just to start here. And all I want you to do is you're gonna take one ball, starting from this position, and I'm gonna pull my hips into contact and finish my fall through. Perfect contact, feels great. Perfect contact. From here now, I'm going to take the racket and I'm still going to be sideways. I'm not going to be completely like in a ready position, but I'm going to be sideways. All I'm going to do is turn my shoulders, boom. So notice that I'm not taking my arms, separating my arms a lot here. I'm just turning my shoulders, dropping the racket and going forward. So turn, drop, turn, drop, okay, turn, drop, and that's all you need to make solid contact. And then from here, now it's a matter of when I use the ball machine that I might have to move my feet just a little bit to make contact. You can basically see by turning my hips, we'll take the racket back, dropping my hands, and then turning my hips back, I'll take the racket back into contact. And so with the ball machine now, I can just turn, turn. <laughs> that feels so good. Turn, turn. And the faster I turn my racket into contact, the more power I'm going to get. Now this is kind of funny. I didn't really mean to set it up like this, but I'm super close to the baseline and I just didn't want to move uh, the camera back, but the ball's coming very deep and I'm making great consistent contact because my racket's not going back super far. Where people make mistakes is this. They'll start seeing it and here and instantly I don't feel the same level of contact. <laughs> that feels really good. I might actually have to adjust my forehand. And this is how you have consistent contact. By having a consistent take back that allows you to get to the contact consistently in the right spot, you can control the ball. Because it's really easy to control the ball if you're sending your energy by using the ground force, pushing, and your rotation through the ball. Where we get into trouble, where we lose the consistency, is when we don't have that energy going through the ball and then we have to muscle it. And that's why most players get into trouble. If you want to learn more about how to hit a great forehand, go ahead and watch this video because it'll show you something I learned from Djokovic about how he takes his racket back to get a little bit more power that you can use by making sure you combine this with that.